Now, a third person has uh, tested positive in the UK for coronavirus. The patient did not catch the virus in China, where the vast majority of cases have been found, but elsewhere in Asia, before travelling to the UK and has been taken to a specialist NHS treatment centre. Meanwhile, China's ambassador to the UK, Liu Xiaoming, has accused the British government of overreacting to the virus outbreak. Our correspondent Rupert Wingfield Hayes reports now from Hong Kong. This is what happens when fear takes hold. Shops in Hong Kong today were being cleared of rice and toilet paper as rumours swirled of a complete shutdown of the border with mainland China. Out in Hong Kong harbour, a huge cruise ship. The virus possibly loose on board. Several passengers have tested positive and no one is being allowed off. From his balcony, Hinsley Lee can look out at his hometown, but can't go there. I am nervous, but the only thing we can do is stay in our cabins and be careful. Hong Kong has now at least five cases of people with the coronavirus who haven't been to mainland China and haven't had any apparent contact with people from mainland China. Also, three of them live in the same place. That is this building behind me here. And that may be the first indication of what is called community transmission. That is the virus passing from one person to another here in Hong Kong. Experts here say they are now not optimistic that the virus can be contained and that a full pandemic may be on the way. Not so, according to the Chinese ambassador to London, who today went on the offensive, insisting China has the situation under control. It is our hope that the governments of all countries, including the UK, should understand and support China's efforts, respect the professional advice of WHO, avoid overreaction, avoid creating panic. But at the same time, from Wuhan, pictures the like of which we haven't seen in generations. Stadiums, gymnasiums and conference centres all being turned into fever centres. So desperate is the shortage of beds for the sick. Hey, by phone today, I managed to talk to a young woman in Wuhan who described to me the stress of not knowing what is really going on and what to believe. We don't feel safe. We don't know how the virus is passed from one person to another. But we can't stay at home all the time. And we don't know when this will end. We don't know when we'll be able to return to normal life. That's very stressful. There is some good news. These are patients who have recovered, leaving hospital today. But tonight we learned that the virus had killed this man, Dr. Li Wenliang. In early December, this brave Wuhan doctor had attempted to warn the authorities about the spread of a dangerous new virus. His warnings were ignored. Rupert Wingfield Hayes, BBC News in Hong Kong. Well, let's go live now to St. Thomas's Hospital in London, where the latest case in the UK is being dealt with. Hugh Pym, our health editor, is there. What's the latest there, Hugh? Well, Hugh, the patient, a middle-aged man, was brought here this afternoon to the Specialist Infectious Diseases Treatment Centre. He'd been taken ill in Brighton and was isolated at home before testing positive. Now, it is understood that he travelled in recently to the UK from Singapore and health authorities have briefed that he did not contract this virus in China. So, on the back of that, they've extended their guidance to people coming into the UK. Up until today, anyone coming in from China who developed symptoms was urged to self-isolate and call NHS 111. They've now extended that guidance to anyone coming in from some other Asian uh, countries, including Japan, Malaysia and Singapore. So where does this leave us tonight? Well, the Chief Medical Officer for England, Chris Whitty, working with the UK's other Chief Medical Officers, says this remains a serious problem for China, but there are still relatively few cases beyond that. If that remains the case, they say the NHS can cope with what's thrown at them. If the WHO change their guidance and it becomes a global pandemic, that could create serious pressure for the NHS. Hugh, many thanks again. Hugh Pym there for us at St Thomas's Hospital.